Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Roy Williams. I'm president and CEO of the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, and I'm going to sort of be your MC uh, this morning. Uh, and first of all, I want to thank all of you for joining us. This is a really special day, I think, in the history of Oklahoma City in the metropolitan area, so thanks for sharing it. Uh, roughly 18 months ago, uh, the Chamber and Oklahoma City community leaders partnered with the Brookings Institution and the Project for Public Spaces uh, to encourage creativity and collaboration in Oklahoma City's Innovation District. Today, uh, we're really thrilled to hear the report findings uh, of this 18-month project and to have a discussion about what the next steps will be as we look to the future of the Innovation District. And I, you know, we do this work around a lot of places in the United States and, and outside the United States. I think what, what makes Oklahoma City different uh, is that you've had a long history of public-private, civic, uh, university collaboration. Uh, the MAPS project is well known in the United States and frankly um, increasingly known outside the United States. And so, um, you know, when Don brought me here and Roy asked if Brookings would engage, uh, we want to engage in places that ultimately want to get stuff done. Um, we don't at Brookings like to do reports. Um, we, we like to work with places, um, you know, that, that essentially engage with us both on the diagnostic and then on the action side. And I think we we've, we've have that here, and we're very excited about uh, where this heads. You know, you're at the convergence of energy and healthcare. There are very few places in the world today that are at that intersection, right? And every, when you sort of say, oh, energy and healthcare, the first reaction is, what do those two things have to do with each other? Aren't they just so radically different that we can't even begin to have a conversation, right? There are obviously two major sectors of the domestic and global economy, major employers, major innovators, right? But they do share a bunch of stuff. And Steve Prescott and GE have been working on finding that sweet spot. They share robotics. They share imaging. They share sensors. They share fluid flow dynamics, right? In energy, they're pushing sort of fluid through rocks. In healthcare, they're pushing fluid through people. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but it's fluid flow dynamics, right? So this is two sectors, both here, that literally are next door to each other, that can co-invent and co-create together. And that's when the magic happens. That's when you basically create the next set of products and the next set of processes that rock the world. And obviously, GE as a company is a company that does both, right? It does the healthcare side, it does the energy side, multiple sectors of energy. So within one company, you have that synergistic effect and the potential for convergence. This is where the economy is going. Uh, and those places that can recognize their ability to pull together what, what's on, on the surface seem like just radically different things uh, and take it to the next stage are those places that are going to be very wealthy and very prosperous, not just for companies, not just for talented workers, but for a broad citizenry. So we've developed something of a 10-year plus strategy here around four areas uh, in these recommendations. One, real estate development. Two, translational science. Three, entrepreneurship. And four, uh, economic development. And again, you can find this slide online. But essentially, uh, something John Westride has said to me, a phrase that I've now stolen and used 30 or 40 times, is that impact equals, four, e e equals mass times acceleration. So on the one hand, there are ways to get quick wins along these initiatives, and that builds the value proposition for what eventually will need to be a substantial amount of capital leverage, not just from, the, you know, if you're looking for the state, uh, that's probably foolhardy, but building over the next 10 years, we really think that this, the innovation district along these four areas are right, energy and health and entrepreneurship and economic de development can really propel the region as a whole to be uh, a global destination around innovation. 
uh, and there needs to be sequ sequential and a clear business model moving forward about how to start going in the next six months with things that cost very, very little to thinking ambitious about how you're going to leverage what will eventually be in the neighborhood of tens of millions of dollars. I'm building on what Bruce talked about and the importance of, of density, proximity, vitality, and walkability. These are really key to a successful innovation district. And as you know, if you want to become a world-class science and technology center and a world-class city, you really need to have a world-class environment for people to work in, for people to live in, for people to play in. Now, innovation districts around the country are densifying and diversifying. And many that have been in office parks, just uh, up until now, are creating, are transforming them into urban environments that allow people to live, work, and play around the clock. Really, a huge transformation is going on around the country in these kinds of, whether they're located in cities, outside of cities, there's a huge effort to really transform them. And, you know, for the, the couple years that we've been engaged here, I think, you know, for us, this has been a really interesting and exciting project. It's given us a chance to really play out on the ground these connections between innovation and place, working with Meg and PPS, um, and, and opportunity and inclusion. Um, it's been a great group of people. We really, you know, thank the chamber and, uh, and everyone else who has been part of the task forces. Um, you know, and, and who was just, you know, engaged with us, whether through interviews and through all the meetings we've had. Um, you know, it's, it's been a, a, a great opportunity to just um, be in this community where we really see the potential. I, I certainly hope that that potential was really reflected here. And we know that there's, a, you know, so much opportunity here. And we think that there's, you know, the, the momentum to get it to happen. And, you know, at the end of the day, one thing that struck us from, from kind of day one is this is a place that really knows how to get things done. Um, if you look at your MAPS program, if you look at, um, you know, the, the redevelopment of the memorial, this is a place that when you've set your mind to do something, you've made some really great things happen. And you can see it in your downtown. You can see it in your parks. You can see it in the memorial. You can see it in your infrastructure. And so now there's another real opportunity to, to help drive your economy and propel it forward, given these major assets that you have um, in the district and in your broader region. So we really look forward um, in the years to come to see how this all unfolds, and we expect great things to happen. So thank you.